Amidst the richly woven tapestry of a small Florida town, Pulitzer Prize winning author Gilbert King's latest book, Beneath a Ruthless Sun, is a gripping true story of violence, race, and injustice. Gilbert joins us today to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning. So happy to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. So rewind us a little bit. Take us back because what's interesting is the first novel that took you to this small town uh, did so well. Obviously, that's a, what you've gotten your awards for, but then it brings you back for the second novel. Kind of set this up a little bit for us. Yeah, well, this is a, a story about a, a very small town with a very big secret, and it happens in 1957 um, at a time where, you know, Florida's economy was booming, the yeah. citrus industry was booming, um, and that something happens in the middle of the night in December of 1957 where a very wealthy um, wife of a citrus baron is sexually assaulted at her home, and she reports it to police, and they round up 24 suspects, and then suddenly the case takes a very large turn, and a white, mentally disabled teenager named Jesse Daniels is railroaded for this crime. Well, and I wanted you to take us back, too, because you actually found out about this story when you were back in the town and, and visiting with some people about the first story you covered in that same small town. Who knew there would be such kind of earth-shattering stories <laughs> right here. Exactly. I was doing a book talk several years ago and this elderly deputy walked up to me and said, you got your book right, but you didn't get the whole story. And he went on to tell me the story that had haunted him. He said of his department framing this innocent person for, uh, for a sexual assault. So you hear that, and I think some of us would you know, that surely that can't be true, but you actually go and investigate it. You did a lot of research for this book. Talk about the access that you had. Uh, I, I realize, I, I, for this family in particular, they were open with talking with you about it. They were, and I really respect them a lot, because I'm asking them to describe the family history of the, of the woman's most traumatic moment in her life, and it's not an, an e easy thing to do. But I think eventually everyone sort of opened up to me and I, and I got my hands on all the research. I filed the Freedom of Information Act requests and um, the story really did pay off. It was exactly what this deputy had told me it was mm. and it was very disturbing. So talk about this town. Unfortunately, there's been some incidents there in this town. I mean, what, what was it about that time period, about this town? I mean... I wish I could answer that question. This is a town of Okahumka, a population of less than 300. And they had three major civil rights cases, all separate, that all went to the U.S. Supreme Court. So I don't think there's another place in the country mm -hmm. that has that kind of legal history within a, a small town like that. And so going back there and seeing that all this Supreme Court history had touched this town mm -hmm. over civil rights was, was really remarkable. Seems like both of the books, too, there's these themes of, um, you know, kind of stepping up and maybe doing what's right, even though it's not popular, you're going to be looked down for it. Right. Those are big themes, I think, that we can still learn a lot from today, because even though this was back in the 50s, I'd imagine some of this stuff, unfortunately, it's has still, not gone away. It's still very relevant. I mean, this really, this story is about a female reporter in the 50s, the only one who would write about this story. None of the men wanted to write about this story, so the other newspapers didn't cover it, but her weekly newspaper did. And she was responsible for getting this kid exonerated after 14 years. It was all her. In fact, the language in the bill when they exonerated mm -hmm. uh, Jesse Daniels, they said if it were not for the unwavering efforts of this newspaper woman, he would have spent the rest of his life in this, in this mental institute. So she really stood up to everybody and, and just mm -hmm. kept reporting the facts. And she did it. She's still around today? What's no, her story? No. She passed away about Aww. 20 years ago, but I think she's a hero. I think people are going to yeah. recognize that she should be, there should be a statue in a square somewhere for her. Well, and when you do all this research for this type of story, I mean, what do you learn? What do you take away as it? I mean, obviously, you're putting it down on paper, but it's got to change you to invest so much of your life into this story and into these actions? It really did. I think one of the things that I came away with was it wasn't just a couple of bad apples in law enforcement. It was state attorneys. It was judges. It was U.S. Mm -hmm. attorneys and it was governors who enabled yeah. these law enforcement to exist and to get away with this. So this particular sheriff was investigated 49 times and never anything wow. stuck. So. Hey, the first book, there's already some film talk, I believe, with Amazon, right? Exactly, yes. We're hoping that this is, uh, there's some big meetings happening okay. in two weeks, and we're hoping uh, it's all a go right now. So keep us posted on that one. Do you yeah. see this one be, I mean, I don't know, it feels like it should be on, on this the big screen like or the small screen too, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you have uh, a hero like Mabel Norris Reese, yeah. a journalist, and a poor mother fighting for her mm -hmm. son and this young disabled kid lang lang languishing in, in a mental institute. It seems like it's built for yeah. the big screen. But. Do you have anyone in mind? Is there any like actress or anyone that you could picture like, yes, that would be good for the role? Well, it's funny because the New York Times just reviewed it, Jeffrey Tubin, uh -huh. in his review, he said, 
look for a war between uh, Meryl Streep and oh. Frances McDormand for this part. So that's a good answer. Go I like it. Those. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's next for you? I don't know. There, there can't possibly be a third third story in that small town. I really there? don't think there's okay, another story. Okay. All right. <laughs> but so where do you go know. to next? I mean, do you think you'll stay in that time period? Or I'm really interested in that area of, of pre-civil rights. You okay. know, before before the big civil rights of the '60s. Okay. A lot of forgotten stories in there. So I would imagine I'll stay in that area. But they're important to be told. I agree. All right. Again, such an honor Thank to have you, you here much. this such morning. We appreciate it. And uh, keep us posted. And again, hopefully we'll see it on the big screen soon. Thanks, Carly.